All right, let's go. All right, thank you everybody once again. Um, let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen. Give me one second. Then we can just have fun. This is gonna be exciting, guys. Let's go. So before we get into the details, um, let me by, I want to ask, did anyone have time to take a look at the star so far before we started? Did anybody take a look at it? No, yes? Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. All right. What I'll do today is we're going to talk about it, focus our energy on those scenarios, map it in real time, prepare your mind to talk in an interview. That's really the focus for me. So I'm going to be really focused on how do you articulate this in an interview, okay? And what typically would happen in an interview would be someone is going to ask you, all right, you know, um, walk me through your experience, right? So in your mind immediately, you start implementing the star. It's a mental state. You're not going to make them think, oh, it's star, right? It's just going to be your talking scenarios of a project. But in the course of talking about the scenario of a project, you're articulating your specific situation, mostly the problem you're solving, right? Then what is the task exactly that you've been given to accomplish in the process? What are the actions and the steps you've taken? And what did everything lead to at the end of it? What's the result? As simple as that, nothing complex. So I'm gonna start with the first one because this is cybersecurity, GRC specifically. There are so many elements, so many areas we focus on. One of them, and I kind of build scenarios around some of the key areas. Feel free to build your own scenarios in other areas you're familiar with, that's okay. But this is a good guide to help you to mentally challenge your thinking, give you a good um, way to articulate and um, projectize every one of these elements. So first one, um, building and developing cyber security policy. Most organizations, some of the gaps they have is the fact that they don't have a well-defined cybersecurity policy and procedure in place, which is like the foundation and bedrock of most organizations, really. Because if you don't have those policies or guardrail in place, then you cannot keep or hold people accountable as simple as that, right? So this example is given a situation whereby an environment just decided that they would go with a cloud service provider. In this case, they've decided to use AWS. So the challenge now is that, all right, within the AWS um, cloud platform they've chosen, we need to start thinking of acceptable use policy that covers cloud. Historically, this company, they've not used any you know, um, cloud system before, but now with AWS, they need to update their acceptable use policy. It's just one of those cybersecurity policy. One of the ways you simply do this is you would um, use a template, right? And a good template typically will be sans.org, which is a popular cybersecurity site out there. And you can outside integrating those key elements that are important from an acceptable use policy point of view and include them in the policy itself. At the end of the day, you've been able to build a good foundation that allows employees, contractors to understand cloud use within your environment and make them in compliance. Right, building policy is not a big deal. Don't forget again, in the cost of building policy, of course, you're gonna work with stakeholders, you're gonna work with business owners, you're gonna work with different people to make sure they agree with some of the recommendations you have, right? Understand how they do business, see how your new policies or guidelines would impact what they are doing at any point in time. So um, that's really what the summary of this is. So let's talk about project. If somebody asks me, all right, Walk me through your DRC experience. I'll start with being excited. And this is um, Johnson, get into this mode. Tomorrow that's gonna be the focus for me. So I want you to be energetic. Start by saying, hey, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Akin. Thank you for giving the opportunity to have an interview with you. I'm excited about the prospect of working with the organization. Some of the things I've worked on include, I've been involved within the DRC space, helping to build cybersecurity policies and procedures in some cases. Um, one of my clients or one of my, you know, my organization, we deployed and moved to the cloud. Because of that, we have to update our acceptable use policy to include how we use the cloud solution. 
And in the process, I was able to integrate the key things around key rotations, multi-factor authentication, how backup and recovery is done within the cloud. Every one of these was integrated into the acceptable use policy for the organization. And I was responsible for building that um, um, policy. Um, also, I championed disbursing and distributing the policy within the organization so that more people can be aware of this policy. Of what use is a policy if it's not shared with people? So it's not simply building a policy, but to ensure your policies are actually shared with the right people and implemented and measure to see how those policies has improved the overall cyber posture of our organization. Let me pause for a second. So that is what this scenario is about, building cyber security policy. Let's go to the next one. And don't worry, along the line, we'll ask questions, but let me just take it through first. Then you can ask questions as we proceed, okay? The second one that is also very important, um, give me one second. I need to make sure I remove this for a second. One second, guys. All right, cool. I may not see you guys again, so that's okay. All right, the second one, which is also important, look at the situation we have. Zainab is our new CISO. Chief Information Security Officer. I immediate priority for Zainab, and in your case, you just well, we are the new CISO in our organization. Our immediate role or goal was to understand what the next action plan should be for the next 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days within the organization. And um, you know, the she needs to understand what the current state of the enterprise-wide security posture is. My role is to help the leadership to develop the plan and do like a baseline assessment for the organization. And what did I do? I decided to adopt the NIST framework. Within the NIST framework, I was, you know, uh, helped with the workshop, collection of the evidences, um, using questionnaires and scoring those questionnaires. Different domain areas were reviewed, including identity, identify, detect, response, and at the end of the comprehensive assessment, I was able to provide action plan to the leadership to prioritize all the key vulnerabilities and to give focus and recommendation for the people, process and technology to mitigate the risk within the business overall. That is scenario two. Let's keep it simple. All I'm saying is that I have an environment that is messed up and we needed a framework to guide us on the key things to test and check. At the end of the day, based on the mapping of this framework, I was able to quickly give an idea to this new chief information security officer, areas to prioritize, areas to invest money for people, process, and technology. That's really the summary. Let's go to scenario number three. Scenario number three, it's similar, but this is using another framework, ISO 27001. In ISO 2701, most times it's geared towards organizations that are mostly global. Let's say you have a new location in Europe or Latin America or different location, you will see ISO a lot. So it's going to be similar. What did you do? Your role was to understand each process within the domain areas of ISO. And based on that, you collect the right evidences, you do the right questionnaireing. You do a CMI scoring, and at the end of the day, you will um, get into the security controls, such as information security policy, A5, A9 access control, A11 physical environmental security. So this gives me an idea of the different domain areas I can speak about. At the end of the comprehensive assessment, you're giving guidance to what leadership should do at the end of the day. Let's go to the next one, four. This is very sweet and easy. What does this mean? Many times you find yourself in an environment that they have identified certain gaps or vulnerabilities within the business. They need someone to be the champion to help them to follow up with the task, identify the issues and potentially fix or close those issues. So you are technically gonna be like a project manager to help follow up on making sure those issues are fixed at all times, very important. So. Um, you proactively meet the stakeholders to fix the issues. You come up with an action plan, the timeline. If there are roadblocks, you bring it up to the management. 
Weekly, you have meetings with the management. You identify what is critical, high, medium, low risk, and you proceed accordingly also. So what is the result at the end of the day? In two months, we're able to champion and drive reduction of the existing security control issues down by 40%. That is amazing. So because many times when you find yourself in this company, they will tell you, hey, you know, um, I can, we have this list of uh, vulnerability of, you know, mitigated, mitigation um, that we need to work on. Can you help us to champion it? And let me give an example. You realize that they are not doing um, quarterly review of privileged users. Maybe that's one of their security controls. Yours is to find out why they are not doing it. Secondly, who is responsible for doing it? Thirdly, what is stopping them from doing it? Those are the things you're following up and documenting and making sure people are held accountable to those key things within the organization. All right, let's go to the next one. Scenario six, five, <clears throat> risk assessment to determine areas of importance. Many times, one of the big things you see anywhere in the world today is there are so many environments constantly contemplating moving to the cloud, right? So in this case, what has happened is that you know, um, somebody has, you know, within risk assessment to determine the cloud solution provider we are going to, you know, provide within our organization. And we simply just identify those key vulnerabilities and see how those cloud solution providers mitigate the risk around it or identify the risk around it. And what are we looking for in the action plan? I'm looking at the likelihood of occurrence of those risks, the impact severity, and the risk itself. So based on that, at the end of the day, I develop a final report that shows the critical high risk areas for management to prioritize and mitigate. Sometimes they will accept the risk, own the risk, and sometimes they will transfer the risk. Whatever they decide to do, you have highlighted the risk within the environment for management to take it up afterwards. That's really what that is talking about. All right, let's talk about, and you know, when you read it now, after talking about it, it will make more sense to me because at that point, you can you can start wrapping your head. Once I finish, I will ask questions. We can talk through it one by one, okay? But I just want to make sure I finish it first. Scenario number six. This is similar to the previous one, but the difference is that in this case, look at what's the scenario. Your organization has an upcoming audit. And sometimes the audit might be internal audit or from an external point of view, coming to do audit of your environment, right? And there are certain gaps that was identified in the previous year audit. And the expectation is that those issues should have been mitigated or fixed before the current audit period. So your role is to help them to remediate those IT general controls issues. So what do you do? Proactively, you set up a meeting with the stakeholders that are responsible to fix the issue. You begin to put an action plan, timeline, identifying all the root blocks. And when I say action plan, what you're just saying is, okay, you have a list of um, privileged users that are supposed to be reviewed. When is it supposed to be reviewed? Who is responsible for it? What's holding it? What are the issues? Those are the things we are just doing, really. Um, of course, because you know that you have to prioritize things, you want to focus on the critical and high risk issues first. You know, um, an example was particularly ensure privilege access review is done, terminated users are timely removed. So I give some examples in the action plan to kind of give you an idea of some exciting way to tie it together. You know, and <clears throat> at the end of the audit, you will say there were no significant findings because you ensured appropriate remediation was done for the previous major finding. So what this is all about is just to give you an idea of how you can projectize this in a discussion. The red is talking about the problem. The yellow, you can see, is really going to the result. And I did that across the board so it can make your life easy. My recommendation for everybody on this call, make sure you print this out. You must print it out, take notes. If you want to do it, just um, put whatever in your cheat sheet, print the scenarios out, um, customize it to fit your own style, okay? And have fun doing it. But that's really the gist of it. Let's go to the next one, number seven. 
third party risk assessment um, vendor questionnaire. So what's the problem here? <clears throat> Your organization is now moving to utilize a lot of vendors for different cyber solutions because every cyber tool today, I can assure you, they have some element of cloud solution out there. The problem is that there have been nobody taking ownership of tracking these vendors. We don't know what they're doing. We don't know if they are exposing our data to high risk. Those are huge deal. So your responsibility is to come up with an action plan on the process to implement the selection, onboarding, management, renewal, and termination within the organization, right? So you start by proactively meeting the various vendors. You set up vendor questionnaires, you know, and some of the questions you have should be like, do they have cyber insurance? How is data stored? What type of data is stored? What kind of encryption do they have? Do they do regular audit like SOC 2 report audit? You know, then at the end of the day, you review the current third party risk management process and, you know, to ensure it includes things like the selection process, the onboarding process, the management process, renewal process, and termination process. Result, at the end of the review, you were able to determine vendor tier and vendor ranking. You did continuous risk assessment of the vendor and you were able to assess the right vendors to renew or terminate their access within the environment. Because ultimately, your recommendation will determine which of the vendor we are gonna keep, which of the vendor we are gonna potentially terminate their access, all right? And finally, this is a real life question that was asked to one of my folks. Um, somebody asked uh, this person that, what would you do if you have a vendor that you are doing an assessment and this vendor refused to provide you documentation? You and I would agree, number one, I know that's a problem immediately. I'll cut them a benefit of doubt that maybe, you know, the person is not available. I'll check if they have a backup, if they have um, a manager I can reach out to. I'll make some excuses for them for a start until I realize they are really messed up, right? So some things to take note of. How do we ensure we have master service agreement in place, non disclosure agreement in place? Um, you know, um, how do we validate the effectiveness of their controls, like asking for their SOC 2 report. Then overall, you know, um, I forward if they have any issues to their issue management team, you know, at that point in time. So that gives a summary of the quick snapshot of everything that has to do specifically with the cheat sheet. Let me pause for a second. Give me one second. Let me stop. 